Welcome to the post-game press conference for the victorious Arkansas Razorbacks. I'm up on the podium with head coach Mike Neighbors and a couple of the key players from tonight's game, Chelsea Dungy and Jalen Mason. Quick reminder about our format. Coach will give an opening statement. Then we'll have questions for the student athletes. When you're asking a student athlete a question, please use her name. That helps us out. Raise your hand. The microphone will be brought to you to ask your question. And then after we dismiss the student athletes, we'll take questions for coach. Please silence your cell phones and no video recordings. Coach, would you like to begin, please? Sure. Um, don't ask me any questions about how it happened because I honestly don't know. Uh, we were down. I, uh, the last thing I remember Coach Schaefer saying is they've made six of their last nine field goals, and that can't happen anymore. And I don't think they made another one. Maybe one or two. But the sequencing of events, I'm usually pretty good at remembering things that happen. I don't remember the exact same, the exact things that happened. All I know is that our timeouts were incredibly positive, were incredibly player driven, were incredibly, all we did was make some tactical things and we stuck to it. I, until Jerry said we closed on a 17-0 run, I had no idea that was the case. Was that right? 17 or 16? 17? 17? I had no idea. I just knew that we buckled down and it seemed like in the fourth quarter we got every 50-50 ball, and then we went and created some that we probably shouldn't even been 50-50. Um, as far as going to the championship game for the first time in our school's history, couldn't be more proud that it's with this group of kids. That uh, it's a, it's a, we're a blended family. Um, a, you know, Jalen stuck around in a, in a time and a climate where every kid has every opportunity to bolt on a university and a team, and she didn't. Thank you for staying. You're <laughs> Along with the other kids that did, y'all can go through and enlist them. And then to get a few kids to believe in us from the get-go, like, like Chelsea did, and IT did, and Raven did, and then Lex. I couldn't be more proud to be associated with them and get to fly around and ride on the bus with them. Questions for the student athletes, please. Uh, Paul Martin, I'm here on behalf of the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Uh, first question is for Jalen. Uh, uh, this will be kind of the same question for both players, but I'll start with Jalen. Um, coach couldn't put it into words or explain it. <laughs> Can you? No, I really can't. It's an unbelievable feeling right now. For the past three years is the first time that I've been here in this situation, and I'm extremely proud to be able to have Coach Neighbors um, be my head coach and have people like Chelsea just come out and be so positive and have such a great impact on our team. And we're really excited for where we're going right now. Chelsea, I'll, I'll pose a question to you. Can you put it into words? Can you explain it? Um, I don't think any of us can right now. Um, it just ha it hasn't even hit me yet that we're playing in the finals tomorrow. Um, I'm sure it will tonight. Um, but no, like, like Coach Neighbor said, I'm so happy to be a part of this team. I'm so happy that I, I chose this school to be coached by Coach Neighbors and to play with people like Jalen Mason and our seniors and just we have a special group we really do we've we fought through adversity together and this is something that we've we've fought so hard for a follow up to that chelsea uh, things weren't working for you early they were keying on you how did you stay focused and not force things and just let the game come to you later that, that's just part of the game i just let it come to me i always let it come to me um and, and my teammates do a great job of picking me up when I need picked up and, and vice versa. And uh, last question for you, Chelsea. Um, throughout the game, for it seems like three and a half quarters, the team was struggling shooting from the field and then it started clicking in the fourth quarter. Can you attribute that to anything? Was it defense? Was it getting into a rhythm? What happened in fourth quarter? We had to buckle down on defense. We had to get stops. We had to put them together. And that created offense. That created a 17-0 run. I have a question for Jalen. Uh, coach Blair was just in here, the Texas A&M head coach, and he talked about how the Aggies were just out hustled, you know, and at the end you guys were making the, the hustle plays and you were able to out tough the Aggies and, and keep that focus. Mm -hmm. I mean, as a fan that has watched these last three games, how are y'all not tired right now? How are you able to <laughs> buckle down to use Chelsea's words and finish this game that way? It's just extreme confidence in every single one of our players that is the five on the floor and the five or and the others on the bench and from our coaches and we knew exactly what we had to do. We knew the possession arrow was in our favor. We knew how many fouls that we had um, left to give and just having that conscious awareness of the game from every person on the floor and on the bench really helps us and 
just keeps us really motivated to keep our motor running. And then just to follow up for you, you're in the SEC championship. Me or Chelsea? No, for, for Jalen. Oh. And then I'll, I'm going <laughs> to actually ask it to Chelsea too in a different way. But for Jalen, okay. he mentioned how you stuck with the program through mm -hmm. the change and the adversity. And now you're playing for an SEC title. Did you think that was going to happen in your career arc? I mean, I had extreme confidence in Coach Neighbors once he got here. And he'll probably tell you we sat down and had like an hour long conversation because I had a list of questions. Um, <laughs> but he went, I mean, he's a champ and he just went through them with me and told him and told me what uh, his philosophy was. And I was like, I, I'm a part of it. I want to be a part of this. And I knew his winning record and um, I was excited to have him as our coach. Kind of the same question for you, Chelsea, but it, you know, you came to Arkansas in a different way, starting elsewhere and then believing in Coach Neighbors. But for this to happen this year, after you guys were in so many close games and kind of what you went through through the season, was this in your plans for the weekend? <laughs> I've always been a believer. And, then, and with this group of girls, I know that this is, a special, this is a special year. This is the year that we can accomplish so many things. Um, and just like tonight, like I said, it's just a special group. I just want these guys to hear this, so I know I'm not supposed to talk and answer, but we've started working for this specifically in mid-December, taking an extra day on Fridays for what we call game after the game, where these guys, they actually get two days a week off. They don't really realize it, but they pretty much <laughs> do. And then you, uh, we start working for the postseason then, and – They'll figure this out after they graduate, and they can talk to Heather, my GA. We, we lose a few games in the middle of the year because of the way we practice and the way we prepare. But it's so that when you get to this time of the year, we're fresh, we're happy. It's the freshest we've been. It's the happiest we've been. It's the most together we've been. And we fight. We, we dealt with things. We, we didn't back down from one challenging situation all year. And we had some on our foreign trip. We had some at the preseason. We had some on... About usually, I'm waiting for it, because anytime we're together about six days, we start doing something. Isn't that right? Yeah. But we're not going to do it this time, because we see what can be happy. So we, we've, we've fought through it. We've dealt with everything. So a small deficit in anything compared to what this group has fought through and come out of on the other side, uh, a team that I'm just really, really proud of and for. Do we have any other questions for our student athletes? Ladies, thank you. Go celebrate with your teammates. Also, rest. Big game tomorrow. Thanks, ladies. <coughs> Questions now for Coach Neighbors. All right, Coach. Uh, seemed like it had slow start to quarters. They were able to establish things in the post. Uh, it took a while to get things in rhythm. Um, yeah. What? It seemed like the end of that quarter was kind of a culmination of all the previous quarters in getting to that point. We were tired. I was tired. I called two plays tonight that we don't even have. I, I called two actions that we don't even have. Uh, we were tired. We were spent a lot of energy. And then there was that timeout where we got in there and we talked about buckling down, and, and they were leading it before we got in there. And then from that point on, I was just energized. They were energized. They energized us. Um, and you don't want Coach Blair to have the clipboard in his hand. If he can sit over there and draw something up on that clipboard, they're going to get the ball where they want it to the person they want it. So when we were able to string together some consecutive stops, he wasn't able to call his plays over there. And I think that's one advantage to having sat on his bench for a couple of years and, and followed his career, obviously, very closely. Uh, we wanted to make sure that he didn't have the clipboard in his hand at the end. Um, I thought the play when Chelsea hit the three coming out uh, that stretched the lead out to a two-possession game was massive. Um, and our execution was so good down. We, they were so locked in. And uh, I think that was the difference in the, the end of the game and the beginning of the game. Would you say that they as a team kind of took over the game in the, in the fourth quarter by themselves? Sure. They've been doing that, though. I mean, and I don't have any problems saying that. That means we did a good job in practice. If, if, if we're having to coach a team at this time of the year, we didn't do our job in November and December and January and February. Um, they see things. They're our best source of information. They know how they're feeling better than we do. We ask them what defense they wanted to be in. Do you want a double team? Do you not? And they all had great answers. So uh, the less you have to hear from us, the better, I think.
they just appeared to be more active defensively in the fourth quarter. Is that just going down and get something that wasn't there previously? Yeah. I, I think we were tired to begin, and we never did anything. But once we did something good, that adrenaline just took over. And then that belief came back and everything. But it all stayed positive. It was never a time when they were on each other. It was very positive the entire time, and I think that's what kept it going. Uh, and it was everybody. I mean, it was there was a few people that had every reason to get down because they – did something that was a tough play or got their shot blocked or threw the ball away or something, but they never did. And I think that's a, a huge sign of maturity in a, in a team that does believe in each other. Uh, you said last night, I, th I think I'm saying this right, you said this tournament is harder to win than it is to get to the Final Four or something it is. to that effect. I mean, yeah. are you, you kind of seeing the residue of that? Yeah, it's four games in four days. You never have to do that when you're trying to get to a Final Four. Um, you know, if, if you have a good seed in the Final Four, you're not playing somebody like Georgia on day one. Um, you're usually playing a, a team that got in the tournament some different way, and then that next game, and it's just so hard. I, I've never, I've never been a part of a team that's done this, so I don't know what tomorrow is going to feel like. But I know they'll be running on adrenaline. Uh, we've got the best strength and conditioning coach and the best athletic trainer in the country, so they'll, they're going to be the MVPs tonight and getting them ready. And then, you know, we got to turn to a really tough Mississippi State team who presents challenges that you could have a week to prepare for and not have a plan for. So um, but I'm glad it's kind of a quick turnaround. Is there any way to avoid some of those kind of slow starts that you had here and avoid getting in a spot like that? I don't know. If you know, tell me. I, um, I mean, we'll, our video coordinator's been doing a, a hype video every day for us and that's something we haven't been doing during the year so that you know th maybe the hot video needs to be a little extra loud or the song choice needs to be on point as the players would say um i i don't i don't know I, i've not this is foreign territory for me too four games in four days i know this we're going to go home we're going to get in bed we are going to take a shoot around tomorrow and our seniors and everybody agreed to do it and we've not taken a shoot around in two years on a game that was 2 o'clock or pre pre previous. But they all said, we're going to go home. We're going to get in bed. We need to get up and come shoot. Uh, so we're going to do it. Last question. Um, I don't want to make it you know, about the coaches, but obviously you and Coach Blair you know, have a history. You had some very nice things to say about you. Um, how, does it win, how does it feel to get a win over a guy you've spoken very positively of in the past? It, it, it doesn't feel as good as if it had been somebody that didn't give me the chance to start coaching. And uh, there, I didn't have any – there was no reason in the world to hire me as a high school coach. I didn't have any players that he was recruiting. I didn't have any future players. I didn't have any experience. Um, I just kept on him until he finally said yes. And then, of course, I took a $58,000 pay cut, too. Uh, did he mention that part? He did. Oh, good. <laughs> um but every, every day was worth it. Um, I, I wish we could have played in the finals. But now you got Vic sitting there, who I'm, who I'm just as indebted to. But I'm not coaching. I might not be coaching at any level without those two guys. Um, so uh, to be doing it at the SEC and the three of us being the last three kind of left standing, um, I mean, it's, it's something that will sink in. Kind of like they're talking about. It hadn't hit yet. But to me – what Coach Blair has done for our game, uh, the, the positive ambassador that he's been, how many people he's helped, his coaching tree and roots, you know, are so deep. Uh, to be a part of that's an honor. Um, and, you know, now he treats me like a colleague instead of – I used to feel like I worked for him still. I don't feel that way anymore. Um, but um, I don't know if that puts it into words well enough, but it's it's hard to describe how – uh, proud it makes me to, to, to make him proud. Coach, I, ju I just have one thing for you. Congratulations. Thank you. Your kids deserve a heck of a lot of credit. Conversation earlier tonight yeah. left unsaid. What does it say for a team that's the hottest team in the league, that's made an incredible run, put the numbers up against whomever that you like, state your team's case for the SEC tournament? Um, just look at history. Tournament. Yeah, just just look at history. Um, and I know that there's a tremendous challenge this specific year. I follow this as, because of Coach Blair as closely as anybody. It's going to be a really hard year in that room to decide. 
But look at that, what we've done late. I've always heard, how are you playing late? Who can you beat? Can you beat teams that are in the field? Well, I think Mississippi State, I think Texas a ms in the field. Uh, probably hosting. I hope we didn't knock them out of that. Um, and Kennedy Carter will be back, and they're a different team. Let's, we haven't even addressed that, but they'll be, she'll be back, and they're a different team. We played them a week ago, so trust me. She was trying to come in the game that day, so she'll be back. Am I making his case or mine? <laughs> um, I just hope they take an honest look at us and look at the whole body of work and who we've played and what we've done and what we're doing lately. Um, and regardless of what happens tomorrow, I think we've got to be on that board being talked about because of who we've played throughout the year. Our non-conference schedule was exactly what we should have scheduled for being picked 11th in our league. Um, we drew a tough draw in the Big 12 challenge, and we played Iowa State. I think they finished runner-up <laughs> in their league. So we've had a lot of tough things. And when you line that up and you're looking for an at-large team, if you don't look at you know who the schools are, I, I think our case is going to make itself. So, and, and I just tell them I know how hard it is, and we're going to try to win tomorrow so that we don't even have to worry about it. Any other questions for Coach Neighbors? Thank you. Thank you, Coach Thank Neighbors. You.